where they're kind of where it's you know starts getting the wavy aspect. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start it right there. And I'm gonna do a double knot. And I'm gonna use my feet at this point to tighten that knot. So I'm pulling up and pulling towards me, kind of rolling it towards me. So we did a double knot there. I like to keep the tail a little bit longer, especially with the nylon because it'll slip. I do put a little, like one drop of super glue, especially if I'm, if they're going to the store or something. And then the movement from here is the whole time really is to turn and pull. So I'm turning towards me and I'm keeping that tension. So I'll go around three times. And then when I find that knot, that's where I know to do the diagonal. So that first diagonal is going to tell me I'm ready to lay my next bundle. When this can is on top of it, the hole can't be wider than it is. But I don't want it right on top. So I'm going to go underneath that thread. Right on top of the can because when I lift it up, I don't want it. And again, I'm going to pull it to where that meets. And so I'm laying this flat on this other piece. Because if, be if I flatten it out, it will so it kind of fan it. all the way around. Yeah. So we want to keep it and tight you guys can kind of cut off together. So I'm keeping at that angle. I have it over the knot, mostly. It's all right if it's not perfect, but it's just kind of look nicer at the end if it is. And then I'm going to straighten it out and go around three times. So that's, so that's the, the biggest thing to pay attention size, to like here is not only keeping your tension, but wanting uh, to keep that right angle as so much as possible. And I'm laying the thread water, right next to it. So it's touching it, but it's not popping up on top of it. Um, I'm going to go around three times. Perfect, Something else to pay attention to is yeah. letting up on your feet so you let out more material. Because it'll be real easy to be working down at your feet. And so I'm really engaging my core to stay standing up and keeping it keeping it above the knee is a good indicator where to go. And then as I'm going up, I'm also going to bend it, which is going to help give it that wing, that wing arc shape. So now I've gone to this angle again. And feel free to interrupt me at any point if there's questions. So I'm going to go under again, pull this back, angle it down, keep this nice and tight and round, and then again, three times. Setting up on my feet. <laughs> and I think like, my broom base. If you want to keep it really like, not much lower than that. The nylon is much louder. in more material, I go from laying the thread right next to each other to going to an angle that's about 45 degrees. And I'm keeping that angle as I put this in. And it will slide back and forth and you can you can get it right where you want to when you're ready to then go back to the 90 degrees. So you can see a little bit of the design starting to come through. You're leaving like an inch or so of that straight of that angle piece. Yep, there's about an inch in between. Yes. So I'm turning and pulling towards me. Turning and pulling. So I got around three times. I'm gonna angle it while I'm bending. And it's pretty strong material. You can, the the issues you'll find is if you pull up real hard and fast, this can break. And it's totally a thing. And um, tomorrow, I mean, most of the stuff out here is pretty there's dry, another but making up those. finding really good dry there's stuff, you're looking for a low hanging branch. There's another thing, but we don't have to worry about that. Uh, Hemlocks are yeah. great for, you know, the very tiniest stuff. So I'm angled, um, so I've got just one more. Awesome. Nope. And we'll just line it up here in 
you guys will get fireable, we'll line up here in size order. One, and two, then I'll three. Uh, construct it around around the yeah. Alright, so that was my last piece, so I'm going to do this again, and then I'm going to grab my loop that will be used to hang it. So hemp is a little bit more rigid, the nylon will pull a little bit, oh it's a little bit more elasticy. But I'm slowly going to move fully over to the hemp, but I was got a lot of the other material, so I figured I'd use it up. So, got my loop here. And I like to put the loop on the side that doesn't have the angles so that this part is facing out. And then this is the back against the wall. So I'm going to take the feet and lay it flat. Underneath that. And I want to keep these feet close to Merlin. Hey, Merlin. Go around four times on top of it. So I've got that much loop now. So I think that's good and secure. I'm going to trim off a little bit of those bottom ones. It's not necessary either. So now. Try to find the funkier pieces just to leave you all the nicer ones. Part with this is that you have an odd number so that the weave will work. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the, the, the shiny side and that's going to lay flat against the broom horn. And that pithy side is going to be touching the thread. So I'm going to go around all under the same thread and I'm going to go all the way around the broom. And what's most important, again, is just that I've got that odd number. And so I'm slipping it under, and I want it to be touching this other piece, with what's next to it. But not on top of it. Thank you. Bye. So I'm just going to go in. If anyone's got questions at this point. So we're gonna weave the handle with these with these pieces. So I'll show you. That'll be the next part. Yeah, if you want to come close, that would be helpful. And I'm like, you know, letting up to sneak it in there and laying them flat against the stock. Are there other fiber plants that you use for those? But that'll help yeah. Um, I've made rooms with uh, like hay and straw and willow bark and twine. So weaving with the willow bark um, and using the twine as you know, the thread. Really any grass or herb. Yarrow is wonderful for stocky. Yeah. Um, Really anything that has a stock. It's this weaving part that you want to have something that's a little bit more tender. That'll bend and then dry up well. So I'm almost there. I'm going to count what I've got so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to go for 11 on this one. Might have 13 if it's a little bit looser. Might have 9 if it's super tight, but it's going to be, as long as it's an odd number, then I'm going to flip in two more pieces. This is probably the
the hardest part because what's important is that they're again keeping that 90 degrees. These will want to like go like this really easily. So just keep taking your time with this part. I guess I feel like you get just going slow and yeah. peeking at what your neighbors do and helping each other out is awesome. You know, I'm like, how much can really drip out of here? You know. Mm -hmm. But then you know, I've gotten up All right. to. Oh, so. I try. I feel like I've gotten up to. We're ready. I'm going to get that tight and pull those tightly together. I think I, I will trim up a little bit here. Again, not necessarily you're going to weave over that. So now I'm going to go three times to secure these down. And I'm turning and pulling, still keeping that tension this whole time. So now I'm just going to slowly turn these down get them into the position that they'll be. And this part, you also want to go slow. They've been soaking for a while, so they are good and tender, but it, if you go to really quick or pull, it can, it can split this top part. So I just, I'm going to try to introduce myself nicely. And your shortest piece will determine how far down you'll be. So I'm going to sneak, I want to have, you know, probably a pinky's worth at the top of the handle, so I'm going to push this thread down a little bit before I go around, and again that's another opportunity to straighten out your pieces, or push them under more if they need. So I'm, I go all the way around on that one before I pull. And you can pull to where that material is bending in. It'll pull into it, and that's that's First good. All right, so there's my shortest one, and I want to be about that again, about a pinky's you know, worth. With the roller jar, I apply it maybe a Maybell pinky's worth, that, I small pinky's worth, round. Like like and it and like I think I'll do two at the top. Sometimes if I'm doing really bigger ones, it can get bigger, but I mean, I think the black lines are actually, there. I'll do three at the top, two at the bottom. Yeah. Again, you can do what you like. I would, I would do at least, yeah, at least two. So now I'm ready to weave. So it's an under over. So I go under, and again, this part's going to want to angle. It's going to be um, easy to quickly get down there, but you'll want to pull it back as you get under it. So, over, under, over, under, and I'm pulling it back to try to keep that 90 degrees even. And I'm pulling it to where it does push down into the material. So those spread out a little bit, which is totally fine. But as you're going around, you can try to scoot them back around. So I think I'm going to call it, because you do want to have a bit of a foot underneath. So now we grab the other piece for the pull through knot. Yeah, but if you go too far down and so again you know, putting the feet together, the same way you did the loop. And and like even your hand, you gotta make sure. I'm gonna like put the feet under, uh, and I'm gonna find the stock that's nice and flat to lay it on, keeping the feet together, keeping the loop yeah, out, and I'm gonna go on top of that. Flat next to each other, they will really want to pop up onto each other at this point. Not leaving in your feet or your loop. Okay, so now I'm going to really press a good. 
good and tight because I'm ready to cut my cord. So I'm going to have my thumb on it to hold it tight. And I'm also holding it with my first finger. Cut it. Keep it tight. You will slip this part through and grab onto those feet. And I've also got, because this is a smaller piece, pulling a bigger piece through, I've got pliers that help too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So And you're gonna pull it all the way through. And that's gonna be your your So while these bottom pieces are wet, it's the best time to cut them. trim this to do an arc and again you can keep it as wild or short as you'd like the shorter that you do it the tighter it'll be and the longer it is it's, the, it's more bouncy and then we trim the top so the biggest part for the top is not cutting off your loop totally happens 